Hey, welcome. Today I'm going to talk about how you can model PTFE, Teflon materials, using different material models. Which material model is good, which is bad? How do you know which one to select? That's what I will talk about here today. So let's start by talking about the experimental data that I will use. So here is uh, the M calibration window that contains the experimental data. There are a number of different tests here, uniaxial compression, uniaxial tension, uh, cyclic tension at smaller strain, and a triaxial compression experiment as well. So I'm going to try to just plot the small strain tension data so we can see what that looks like here. I'm going to get rid of some of the other uh, load cases, and perhaps that will help us uh, better see the data here. So here is the, the, the shorter small strain data. There are two tests, two different strain rates, as you can see here. And uh, let's take a look at the different material models that we have now. So what I will start to do as I go through it from the worst that I found to the best. So this is the worst one that I looked at. This is a, an elastic plastic isotropic hardening plasticity model. It's available in all finite element programs. This happened to be the Abacus version of it. And if I run this one, you'll see that the predictions are not very good. Um, one obvious problem here is that the yield stress in tension and the yield stress in compression is experimentally very different, but this type of material model can't do it. The unloading response is also really poor, as you can see, very weird in the dashed lines here. I would not use an isotropic hardening basic plasticity model for simulating Teflon, as you can see here. It's not very good. Let's try something else. Here is um, here's the ANSYS version of it. This is a mesoplasticity. This time I added a little bit of creep, time dependence to it. If I run this one, we'll see that it, it still doesn't look very good. It has a weird behavior in cyclic loading. Not, not good enough for us. Let's move on to something else. Uh, the next one, which is a little better, is a, this, a model that's called Elastic Plastic Combined Hardening in Abacus. In many other finite element programs, it's called the Chabuche model. And it has an error of about 24%, which is you know, not very good. Uh, we see the difference between tension and compression again comes back, but otherwise the shape of the predictions look much more realistic compared to what we had before. And this is typical when you use uh, this type of kinematic or combined hardening model. The unloading predictions are much better, but I would not use this model. The error is too big. It's not uh, the best you can do. We can do much better as I will show. So let's try something else. I always try to throw in this one. It's, it's the ball that I call the Bergstrom Boy Small. That's the model I developed a number of years ago. Uh, it was developed for rubbers, so not for uh, this type of Teflon material, which is a thermoplastic material. It doesn't look all that awesome either. We'll see that the unloading response is pretty poor. It's almost linear until you get uh, un reverse uh, viscoplasticity. So I don't usually recommend and I usually don't use this type of Bergstrom Boys to network viscoplastic model for thermoplastic materials because it just doesn't work so well in that case. Let's try something else here. Here's a model that I developed uh, a while ago. This is the dual network fluoropolymer model, DNF. It's part of the PolyU mod library. And if I run it, you can see that it has a prediction is a pretty decent the error is about 14 percent and um, that's not too bad but it it's not the model that i would use most of the time there's one reason why this model is pretty good and that is it can do volumetric er er creep or volumetric flow and that's what, one thing that's uh, pretty cool about this model you can see this is a triaxial test loading and unloading is different which is typically what you don't see with uh, the more plastic uh, shear driven plasticity models. So that's one thing that goes for this model, but it's it's a little too simplistic. We have other models that can do better than this, but it's something to keep in mind that if you want the volumetric flow, perhaps this could be useful for you. So that's a DNF model error of 14%. Let's try something else. Um, the next one is the Abacus PRF model. So Abacus has the parallel rheological framework model. It's a multi-network model. And um, it can do pretty decent here. We can see the error is about 10.8% in this case. It matches the data reasonably well. But if you look particularly at the unloading response, you see that it's not that great, right? It severely overestimates the 
uh, the recovery that the material uh, exhibits as you unload it. So permanent set is not predicted very well with this model. 10% uh, error though, or closer to 11 is not all that terrible. So you can certainly use this one if that's what you have. Uh, we can do better, as I often say, right? So here we go. Here's one that's slightly better. This is the three network model. This is the polyumod version of it. Ansys has the Ansys version. They give pretty much the same answers. But on this one, the error is down to 10.2%. And it does do a little better during unloading, as you can see, that it sort of covers, recovers a little bit better. It, it's some weirdness here in this bi-ax, this bilinear response during unloading. But besides that, it's a, it's a pretty decent model. I wouldn't be too upset if I had to use this model for a PTFE. And it's available in ANSYS. It's part of the PolyUmod library, and therefore you can use it in uh, virtually all finite element solvers. Now, the winner, though, is not this model. The winner this week, too, as it has been in the number of videos in the past, is this one. It's the PolyUmod TNV model, the three network viscoplastic model. The error is down to 8.75%. It matches the data better than any of the more other models for sure. And uh, it is a really excellent model when it comes to accuracy. It matches the data very well. Uh, and it doesn't have any big uh, sort of weaknesses as some of the other models have. It's a robust overall prediction. This is available uh, for any uh, finite element solver that the PolyUmod library supports, which is most of them. So this is the one I would use. This is the one I would recommend because of that. But there are certainly, as I mentioned, other choices too. So let's summarize. So in summary, here are the different models. The error on the y-axis, error in percent between the model and the experimental data. On the x-axis, we have the different models that I talked about. The plasticity models, I don't think you should do use. Uh, they're really not that good for thermoplastics like uh, Teflon-type materials. The BB model, likewise, is not that good. I wouldn't use this. And then we have the four top ones here, the, the polyumod DNF. Again, if you are using a polyumod material model, I wouldn't use the DNF here. I would use the TMV, or perhaps the TNM. And if you're Abacus user, you can use the PRF if you like. ANSYS users can use the TNM. And if you use polyumod, you get slightly better results using the TNV model. So that's, uh, that's the summary here for Teflon or fluoropolymers. These are the models that work the best. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.